your horse racing with daily racing rewards formulator. Now free for DRF Bets members. Sign up to get the best bonus in racing with a $250 deposit match, plus a $10 free bet and free formulator past performances. Go to drf.com slash bet to play like a pro today. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer kicking off a pick four at Pimlico on Black Eyed Susan Friday with race number 10, the grade three Miss Preakness Stakes. Three-year-old fillies going three quarters of a mile. $150,000 is the purse. Let's take a look at this field. I believe Wesley Ward has won this race two of the last five years. He's got another big chance with the number six, Happy Soul, who cuts back to a more appropriate distance. They took a shot in the Ashland. It was a bridge too far. Yep, cutting back out of a grade one race. Um, feels like she's a pure sprinter, Dan. Um, hasn't, you know, run that fast race yet, but she has been pretty impressive um, along the way, a two-time stage winner sprinting. She has big early speed. She has shown the ability to sit off if necessary, but as we take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for this year's Miss Freakness, we are expecting Happy Soul to show big early speed. Lady Scarlet's got speed as well for Mike Maker and Arad Ortiz. Very little sense is a versatile runner, and breaking from the inside, John Court's going to get going. I think Happy Soul's got to get to the top. I do too. And I think they're going to use her speed in this race. Um, and if she, listen, if she's fast enough and manages to clear this field, she's not going to be easy to run down. Very little sense is the number one. John Court, Randy Morse shipping up from Oaklawn Park. 12 to 1 on the morning line for very little sense. This one was second to Happy Soul in the seasonal debut down in the Dixie Bell. Last time out, she finished fourth. I talked to Randy Morse. He told me he feels she had an excuse. She came out of that race with some foot problems. They've given her a break. Uh, he likes the way she's been training. She's got good tactical speed. Yeah, I think she could fall into the right trip here, Dan. Um, we'll see, you know, how how close she can keep uh, to Happy Soul. She faced her, of course, in the Dixie Bell there off the layup in February. I thought she was a good second in there. She was never a threat to win that race, but I thought she ran well. Um, I didn't think she ran as well last time, but that Purple Martin was just a race that was sort of dominated towards the front end. There was really no passing going on in there, so maybe that's an excuse. And it was a quality horse that set the slow pace that day. Pretty Birdie came back, ran really well to be second in the eight bells with an 89 buyer speed figure. Under the Stars is the number two. Under the Stars, graded stakes winner in Southern California when trained by Bob Baffert. The first race for Tim Yachtin didn't go very well, but it was going two turns against the likes of Desert Dawn and Adair Manor. I think cutting back to a sprint works for Under the Stars. Yeah, you just give her a pass for that last one where they, you know, went long against a good field and she didn't get out of the gate. And her day was pretty much over at that point, um, as opposed to um, Happy Soul, the other favorite in this race. This really has actually run some fast races, Dan. I think it makes her really dangerous in here. She also has pretty good speed. Um, it just feels like cutting back is what she really wants. Lady Scarlet's the number three. Arad Ortiz aboard for trainer Michael Maker, exiting a key race, the Beaumont at Keeneland on April the 10th, going seven furlongs on a beard course. And she ran into a freak that day. Monterea not only won that race by a country mile, she came back and she won the eight bells at Churchill Downs with a 93. The prior two races for Lady Scarlet, good going six furlongs. I talked to Maker earlier on uh, Tuesday. He thinks Lady Scarlet's a better filly at three quarters. Yeah, I, I like her going, uh, cutting back a furlong for this race, a little more than a furlong, actually. And, you know, they just put her on the lead in the Beaumont last time. It didn't work out against a good field. Um, I think this is a, a better race for her. I think this is a better distance for her. And she showed two and three back then that she does not need to be on the lead to be effective. So, if, you know, the two favorites hooked up in front of her, um, which I do think is a possibility. She could fall into the right trip here. The four La Casa de Oro goes out for Stuart Grants. The Elkstone group trained by Brittany Russell. Javion Toledo takes the mount. Now, this filly really took a step forward on the buyer scale. If you believe the fig, that 81 from the race we're going to show you right now, a third out maiden fluctuate win at Laurel puts her in the mix. Now, this race is at five and a half furlongs. She got a very good trip sitting third off the two leaders. The horse that eventually she's going to get by is a first-time starter. She's taking a huge step up in class. She she ran really, really well in this race, however, Mike. Yeah, I thought she looked good way in this race, too. It's all the other things that you sort of alluded to, Dan, that kept me from um, using her prominently in my picks. I mean, five and a half furlongs, um, a first-time starter that was second to her, really no nothing else happening behind her there. I thought she looked good winning. I really respect this trainer. Um, I could not talk myself into this horse. 
Saucy Lady T, the number five, will make her first start for trainer Graham Motion after being purchased for $425,000 at public auction in January. Fergal Lynch takes the mount. This horse did some good things. Uh, as a two-year-old last year in New York for James Chapman, Mike, multiple graded stakes placed, including a grade one placing in the spinaway, didn't back down against the likes of Echo Zulu. Uh, motions had her for a while. It's a long layoff. He thinks she's fit. He wonders if six is going to be a little bit sharp for her. Yeah, we'll see what she does off the layoff. It's not like, you know, she has to improve significantly, Dan, to contend with this. I mean, she's got to improve a little bit, but she doesn't have to improve significantly. She was underrated um, as a two-year-old last year, like a lot of horses for, for James Chapman, Dan. He's just a really underrated trainer, and he did a great job with this filly. You mentioned they just sold her for 425 I think Chapman bought her for five. Um, so he did, he did a great job with this horse, multiple graded stakes placed. The problem is the only time she won was on a sloppy track in a, in a four-horse field, and she was one to five. The horse to catch, and arguably to lead, is the number six, Happy Soul. She won two races in a row last year as an early two-year-old by the length of the stretch, and it looked like the sky was going to be the limit, and she got very, very sick. She was going up to the Schuylerville at Saratoga. Wesley Ward told me she came down with about a pneumonia, and they almost lost her. The fact that she came back and she won the Dixie Bell in her first start as a three-year-old, I think is a good sign, especially that she was kind of down in tight on the inside in that race and kept on going. They tried the Ashland around two turns it was too far this is a better distance i just wish you had a little bit better in the ashland yeah i'm just not going to hold the ashland against her dan i just feel like that's not what this horse wants to do um and i was pretty taken with her return of the dixie bell um especially when she didn't make the lead early uh, and then she moved right up on the inside around the turn i thought she was impressive winning that race even though you know once again she did not get a figure for it so she hasn't run that fast race yet which you know, I mean, I guess is a little concerning. I still believe in her talent, though. The seven is Sweet Solaire, Horatio DePaz. Maybe doing the rain dance. Two for two over wet going for Sweet Solaire, including a victory in the race we'll show you right now with Belmont. This is an off-earth first level allowance race and this horse just showed good speed from the start she took on a horde of challengers turning into the stretch, but she stayed on and I guess she went a legitimate pace in this race. Yeah, she did. Um, the problem, Dan, is that this isn't a great field. You know, the horses that are going to run second and third to her, they've been knocking around New York forever. I think they've combined to make 60 starts in their careers. They're not stakes horses. Um, you know, Sweet Solari did what she had to do. She's very lightly raced. She has won two in a row on a wet track. So I guess you could move her up if we get some rain um, in between those two wins, though, Dan. She was in against Lady Scarlet and she got pounded. Maybe you could use the eight in your gimmicks. After all, she does go out for the great Steve Asmussen, 10 to 1 on the morning line, coming off of a victory at Oaklawn Park. A much improved performance in her second start of the year. Let's watch that first level allowance at Oaklawn going three quarters of a mile. She broke from the rail. She made the lead. She kept on going. I did not like this field she was up against. I think she's taking a big step up in class. I think this outside post really could help her. Happy Soul's going to go. Maybe another horse down to the inside gimmick could work out that good three wide tracking trip yeah i think that's true i'm with you though um i i wanted to like her more dan than i do that i wound up liking her after that race or there she looked good winning it i just didn't think it was a good field um and she just had all the best of it that day some of her prior races though i do think make her a little interesting before we get to our top picks, please subscribe to the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel for all the latest content, especially all the Preakness-related content from DRF TV. Top pick time for the Miss Preakness. We are kicking off a pick four. Happy Soul is way the horse to beat. I think she's going to take a lot of money in this race. I think she's going to take a lot of beating. La Casa de Oro is a bit of a reach, Mike, but she's got the fig. And Brittany Russell does a great job with her horses in Maryland. I just have a feeling this horse is a little bit better than her first two starts. Her last race showed that, but she's going to have to step it up again. She is, but she should be a fair price in this race, Dan. I thought about her. I couldn't get there. I put her fourth. Um, I had the two favorites, second and third. Um, and I'm just going to hope that Lady Scarlet can run as well as she did two back in the Cicada and maybe pull a little bit of a trip in this race. They put her on the lead last time. That's no good. Lady Scarlet, very, very talented filly, battle-tested and tough, and I think she could be right there when they turn for home. 3264 for Mike, 4163 for me. It's the grade three Miss Preakness kicking off a pick four at Pimlico on Friday. Good luck.